Awesome. Uh, thanks again for, uh, for the invite and for having me here, guys. Um, I really, really appreciate, um, uh, again, just you asking and, and kind of the opportunity. Um, you know, given the, uh, the past year, I think all of us have been doing a lot of the, these like virtual clinics and uh, probably checking out YouTube videos and all that stuff and just trying to keep our craft going. So um, I guess it's, uh, I thought, I guess it's my turn to, to be one to, uh, to do a little presentation. So again, thank you for the invite. Um, anybody who's, uh, who's watching, uh, if uh, you ever want to get a hold of me or anything like that, I threw my contact information up here for you. Um, again, my name is Rob Futurelli. I'm the offensive coordinator at uh, St. Thomas More in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, just uh, wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, to our coaching staff. Um, these guys are absolutely awesome. My brothers, um, we, uh, we we work really hard together to uh, to, uh, to to build a program, and our kids have been so committed. Um, that uh, we definitely had some recent success, and uh, if it wasn't for uh, for these guys and for for the commitment of our kids, we uh, uh, you probably wouldn't even be asking me to talk. <laughs> but uh, so our head coach Claudio Silvestri has been around uh, for uh, for uh, for a long time. He is uh, he is the patriarch. He's uh, he started it all. So uh, you know, Claudio's been great. Our defense coordinator is uh, uh, Coach Joe Burke. Again, he's awesome. If you've ever uh, been able to see us play, he's uh, the defensive mastermind. He does some really, really great stuff. Uh, every single one of our assistant coaches, um, you know, I've, I've got everybody listed there. Um, our STM Twitter's on there as well. Uh, again, I thought that it was important to talk um, about all these guys because um, really when it comes to putting anything together, um, it, we, we dialogue so much that uh, these guys are all very much a part of it. Um, I don't even know how many times they've gotten a text from me uh, at who knows, it could be 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, maybe even one in the morning. And I'm like, Hey, what do you think about this or that? Um, and, uh, and, you know, we've, we've dialogued at some point. So, uh, you know, anything that I'm talking about here, um, you know, they, uh, they've, uh, these guys have all been a huge help in that as well. So just wanted to give them a, a quick shout out. Um, okay. So in terms of using a bunch of formation, um, you know, I think the very first thing and, and that really I wanted to talk about is, is, you know, when, when you're putting this together, you got to figure out what your purpose is, you know, why are you doing it? Um, you know, so you, you got to ask yourself, why are we doing this? Um, you, you ask yourself, what, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, and that's very personal. Um, it's, it's, you know, your own philosophy. It's, it's, uh, going to be, uh, you know, about the players that you have and that sort of thing. Um, but, um, you know, the, the one thing I'll say is, you know, don't just run, run it just to do it. Um, you know, there's a bunch of formations that, uh, that you'll see in, in every level, um, you know, college and, uh, in the CFL and the NFL, uh, you name it. Um, and it might look good. Um, but if it's not going to fit you or, you know, your team, then, you know, maybe it's not something that you do. But if it's something that, you know, you think is going to be useful and, you know, what, whatever it is you want to get accomplished, uh, then, yeah, it's, it, it can be a, a great tool. Um, so the next thing is, you know, if you are going to run a bunch, you, you probably want to ask yourself, you know, what kind of bunch do I want to run? So like what type? Um, you know, do you want to run a triangle if you're in a trips? Do you want to run, uh, you know, triple stack if you're in trips? Uh, do you want to run a quad bunch? And that's kind of like a diamond look. Um, you know, the other look that I have here that, that I've definitely seen before is they'll, they'll run like an inside bunch with the outside receiver, uh, free. Um, but again, uh, you know, very much to you, you know, other questions that you want to ask yourself, uh, are going to be, you know, do you want to run a tight bunch right to the, uh, to, um, to your offensive line? Uh, do you want to run a wide bunch or do you want to do it somewhere in between? Um, you know, the, the next question that you might want to ask yourself is, you know, am I going to use a tight end? So if you're going to use a tight end, same thing, you know, is he going to be right beside my tackle? Is he going to be more of a split end? Um, you know, where, where do you want to put him? Do you want to put him on the backside? Um, you know, again, questions that, that really only you can answer in terms of what you want to get done. Uh, you know, the other thing you might want to ask is, uh, is, you know, do you want to use motion? Um, or do you want to start in the bunch? Um, you know, I'll say that we've, um, the, the couple clips that I have here, um, you know, there's, uh, I know I have at least one look that I can think of off the top of my head where we are motioning into it. Um, but, um, sometimes motioning into it is not what you want because you might want to see what the defense is going to do, um, beforehand. 
and you'd rather not motion into it. Again, very, very personal. That might depend on your quarterback, the receivers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and those are questions that, you know, I, I can't answer. You'd have to answer, um, um, you know, uh, again, on your own when you're developing this. Um, you know, the next thing I want to talk about is personnel. Um, and this kind of also goes into the, you know, um, you know, don't just do it to do it. Um, you know, if you know you don't have the personnel to, to run this or accomplish whatever it is that you want to get done, then yeah, maybe this just isn't the look for you. Um, you know, uh, a bunch formation might not be the thing that you need to, to do. Uh, and then, you know, some more questions that you got to start asking yourself is, you know, who goes where? So, you know, if you've decided the kind of bunch that you want to, you want to run, um, you know, who are you going to put in these particular positions? So if you're going to, uh, you know, widen out a little bit, um, you know, where do you want your athletes, right? Why do you want them in that particular spot? What kind of, um, you know, plays or designs do you have um, to get them the ball? Um, you know, the next thing you might want to ask, who has the best hands? And then again, where do you want him, right? Um, do you want him in your bunch? Do you want him on your ISO side? Um, where in the bunch do you want him and, and how you're going to, uh, uh, you know, look to, to get him the ball or, or the reasons that you want him in that particular spot? Um, you know, one thing I'll say as far as a pointer is whoever your point man is in the bunch, um, that guy's got to be pretty smart and he's got to be, uh, he's got to be pretty tough. He can't be afraid to be physical, um, not to, uh, to, to knock receivers too much, but sometimes that can be difficult. <laughs> um, they, uh, they sometimes don't like to necessarily get, uh, get their noses dirty as linemen. So, um, you know, the, the guy who is your point man though, um, he, he's going to have to be ready if they do decide to jam it, uh, to get off of that. And then again, when it starts coming to their releases and that sort of thing, he's got to be pretty smart. Uh, to not get in the way of the guys that are behind him and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, that's that's definitely something you should probably consider as far as your whoever your point is. Um, you know, the next question, who's your fastest receiver? And again, you're asking yourself the same question. Where do you want him? Why do you want him there? Uh, again, do you want him as your ISO guy? Because, you know, he can burn a guy up the sidelines. Uh, then, I mean, then that might be it. Uh, maybe he's um, the inside guy in your bunch and you want him there because you want to get it up the seam or maybe as the outside guy in the bunch, because you want to get him up the outside. I, again, I, that would be something that you'd have to decide and, and however you design, uh, you know, your bunch. But again, a question that, and obviously I'm, I'm, I'm putting these out there because these are things that, you know, I, I was asking myself, I was asking the other coaches when we were designing this, you know, how do we want to get this all put together? Um, I talked about the ISO man, you know, the, the ISO man in the bunch, what do you want to do with him? Um, you know, I mentioned if, if he's the tight end, then, you know, if, if, why do you want him there? Why do you want him in that spot? If you're going to widen him out again, same thing. Um, you know, is he there because he's your best jump ball guy, your best athlete, your fastest guy. I mean, if, if it's a guy who's a combination of all of them, then, you know, it's great. Um, but, um, you know, you got to ask yourself, why do I have that guy there? Um, you know, and then the other thing that I, I really haven't mentioned too much and, and that gets kind of lost in it is, you know, your backs. Um, so what kind of backfield alignment do you want? Um, you know, obviously if you're in a quad, um, automatically you're going to have an ace backfield. Um, but, uh, but if you're, uh, you're going to run any type of trips, uh, you know, again, what formation do you want? Why do you want your back? Why do you want your backs in those particular positions? Um, you know, and then also how does that all kind of relate to your base offense? Um, but, um, but I, I, again, this would be all, all things that, you know, I, I, I would say that, uh, that you should be asking yourself again, that, that we were asking ourselves when we were putting this stuff together. Um, you know, and then the question is going to come up, you know, how's, how will the defense react? And I'm, this is my absolute honest answer is you really do not know until you actually run it until you're in a game. Um, you know, um, the defense can react in so many different ways. Um, I really do think, that, um, you know, we, uh, I, I think defenses in Canada, uh, are, are much more, um, uh, diverse, a little bit more creative. Um, I, I think that, uh, they're also not necessarily as regimented in some of their rules, uh, which also makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of prep, um, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're using a bunch or not. Um, but, uh, you know, I couldn't necessarily come on here and say, okay, you know what, if you run this type of a bunch, this is what the defense is going to do because you really don't know. Um, so, you know, a lot of it is going to become, 
you know, in, in your prep going into a game, you know, how do they react to if you are in, you know, again, if it's a three man bunch, uh, you know, if it's a three by one type of bunch, how do they normally react to a three by one look? If it's three by two bunch, how do they react to how would they react to a three by two look? The four by one, all the same kind of things. Um, you know, what kind of front do they run? What types of coverages do they run? You know, that's all kind of the prep that you would have to do um, beforehand, um, you know, to, to kind of figure that out. Um, you know, the next um, couple questions that you might want to be asking yourself is, you know, are they going to jam the bunch side, right? Or do they not jam the bunch? Again, that's going to vary. It might depend on, uh, you know, the defense, that defensive coordinator, their philosophy, um, and kind of what they um, – what, what they want to do and how, how they want to defend it. But again, I, I couldn't come on here and just say, this is exactly what's going to happen. Um, you know, next you're on your ISO side. Are they jamming that guy? You know, um, are they giving him a release? Uh, you know, and, and again, how do, I'll get into alignments in one second, but you know, how, how's that all come into play as well? Um, you know, the next one, who's the low man to, on the bunch side? Is it the half? Is it the corner? It could even be a linebacker. Um, again, some of the clips that I have that I'm going to get to, um, you know, you're going to see that um, there's, you know, there's a couple of different teams that we play uh, and they all reacted differently. They really did. Um, and there's, I know uh, right off the top of my head, I can think of one clip where a backer's coming out. I can think of a clip where the half is and, and I'm almost positive there's one where the corner is. Um, but again, that all is, it really depends on who you're playing. Um, you know, next, um, you know, Shades and alignments of all the secondary players. You know, that's the next thing that you have to look at um, because that really does matter. So, um, you know, in terms of the, the the route combinations and the plays that you have in, you know, how is that going to affect, you know, the, the releases of all your guys on the bunch side and obviously also on, um, uh, on your ISO side? Um, because, you know, it, it's great to draw stuff up on paper, um, but you know, the second that it's, it's, a, it's, you know, a person that a receiver has to run through or whatever it is. I mean, now the complexities kind of start, you know? Um, so, uh, again, taking a look at those shades and alignments can definitely come into play. Uh, and then, I mean, I, I mentioned this before with, uh, you know, thinking about the running backs and, and your backfield formation. And now, um, you got to take a look at the alignments that are going to be in the box. So, um, you know, and, and again, how do they react? Are they going to bring a linebacker out of the box? because that's going to change the numbers in, in there. Um, you know, are they shifting one way or the other, depending on the field, depending on the bunch, all those different things. Cause again, every defense is a little bit different. Um, you know, the next thing, are they changing personnel? Um, so if you change personnel, are they changing personnel? Um, do they change personnel anyways, if they know that you've been running it a little uh, more often than not, let's say, um, because that can come into play. And, you know, where is that change happening? Again, like, uh, are they subbing in uh, or so are they subbing on a linebacker and bringing another DB? Um, you know, what, what is it? How, how are they doing that? Um, are they changing their base defense in any way? Uh, because if they're not and, um, you know, the prep that you have going into the game, obviously it's going to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, but if they are in any way, you know, again, these are questions that you're asking. Um, you know, the other thing that I should point out uh, as well is as I'm going through all this, um, when you're developing this and when you're executing these things, your players really do have to have um, an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. Because all these things that I'm asking now, especially when it comes to in-game, you're going to have to ask them. You're going to have to say, uh, you know, because how it might look in the booth, how it might look from the sideline, that can be very, very different than, you know, how your players kind of feeling that or, you um, uh, um, or, or seeing it when he's lined up, um, you know, you might think, okay, well, you know, because of, um, you know, the alignment of, of the, of the half here, I don't think we can get inside him, but your receiver might say, you know what, his, his eyes are, 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 are so locked on me that I can give him a little bit of move and I can get inside. No problem. Well, now that kind of changes things a little bit. So your receivers need to know, you know, what you're trying to get done. Your quarterback needs to know what you're, what, what you're trying to get done as well. Um, you know, and then in, in terms of the defenses, uh, again, a four, three or five, two, a three, four that, you know, they all essentially have, you know, one safety high, they're going to look and react very different than, you know, uh, a four, two or four, four or a three, five, uh, or three, uh, three type of stack that has two safeties. And again, how they're all rotating to that, uh, to, to your bunch is, is going to vary. All right. One thing that's similar, um, is that, you know, um, you know, 
is that they're one or two high, but technically they can all play some form of zone. Uh, they can all play man, or they can play a combo of, of both, right? Like kind of almost like a match or quarters type of, type of concept as well. Um, and then it comes down to, you know, how are they doing it? And again, I started this and I want to mention again that alignments are absolutely crucial because, um, you know, how they're aligned um, to the bunch side, to the ISO side can very much matter uh, in terms of, again, what you want to get done, where you want to attack. So that, that the alignments are very important. Now, it's interesting um, that, uh, that, you know, uh, when I was talking to Coach about, uh, about doing this, uh, um, you know, just a, a week or two ago, um, when we were talking about some topics, I thought about a bunch of formation, and sure enough, through my Twitter feed, what comes up is um, a, a Glazer clinic, uh, and they were showing some clips of Nick Saban talking about defending the bunch, and he talked about two different looks, I guess they have in Alabama, they call interstate traffic. Not that I'm going to go into each one of them, um, but he goes into, if you get a chance to see these videos, he talks about both of these looks that are, um, uh, uh, defenses that, uh, that they do to defend their bunch, uh, to defend the bunch. And then right after he goes through all these, he says, but there's other ways you can play it. <laughs> so I thought that was funny because I, I, I had this slide pretty much done, um, after I, um, uh, had heard this video uh, or saw this video and I thought, well, this is exactly what I'm trying to say is that, you know, Sure, you got Nick Saban here talking about how they defend the bunch, and it's, and it's really two different ways that he speaks of. And then he finishes it off with saying you could actually do it in other ways. So you know, there's not really um, you know uh, uh, like a I can't give you a photocopied version like you see a bunch and here's how the defense is going to react. All right, um, and you know it does come through a lot of experimenting. Um, you know, after you've done some research on the bunch, because I'm sure that you know you're not going to necessarily just draw stuff off stuff. Uh, right after I'm, I'm done talking here, you, you're pro you'll probably dive in a little bit more and see what other people have done. Um, you know, you got to draw a lot, and you know, I've I've definitely used a lot of paper um, in uh, in a lot of different looks, um, but this one in particular. Um, and uh, you know, my best resource, without a doubt, has been the, def the defensive coordinators I've worked with. Um, you know, at STM, I, as I mentioned, our defense, our defense coordinator is Joe Burke, um, and he does such a great job. Um, and, and he does a great job. One of the things that that uh, you know, as soon as I got on at, got on at STM, uh, you know, I, I noticed with with, with him is that um, the way that he can break down a team uh, is, is amazing um, uh, and and really uh, really incredible. Um, so when I went to drawing this stuff up, um, you know, I, I would give him tons of different looks and say, okay, how would you defend this? And then I would start, and then I start with the whys. Why would you do this? Why did you do that? Why is he here? Why is he there? What do you think about this? What if I put that guy here? And it's honestly just nonstop trial and error. Um, you know, I've, I have had the opportunity uh, as well to, to coach rep in Hamilton um, and uh, coach Underhill. Rob Underhill was our head coach and, uh, and again, a good friend of mine. And, you know, he, he got the same treatment from me in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of drawing things up, you know, why are guys going here or there? Um, uh, Adam Grandy, same thing, uh, you know, uh, uh, coach Cameron, Dwayne Cameron, I had the opportunity to coach, uh, team Ontario a couple of times, uh, and, and with coach Cameron, uh, I do have one or two clips from when we ran this, um, uh, against team USA actually. Um, and same thing. I, I remember him and I having discussions about, uh, about stuff like this in the, uh, at, uh, at breakfast a couple of times, uh, when we were down in Texas. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, Brent Munson who's the defense coordinator uh, for uh, Calgary St. Peter's now, uh, again, has been a great resource uh, as well uh, in terms of, you know, uh, just me bouncing ideas off and stuff like that. But the reason I'm bringing these guys up is because, you know, you have your own defense coordinators. Uh, you probably have a network of other uh, defense coordinators as well. And, and reaching out to them as a resource was uh, an absolutely huge help uh, for me. Um, and these guys uh, all, all are, are definitely part of, you know, how – kind of developed where uh the the bunch look that i ended up coming up with um or i should say we ended up drawing up um you know when it comes to building your playbook um i'm sure that everybody at some point has heard of the the, the kiss philosophy right keeping it simple so they keep it simple stupid um and really i feel like the challenge ends up becoming uh that you don't want to overdo it um so you know you ask yourself all these questions you think about all the different things that the defense can do and eventually you're going to have to filter it down um, to, you know, what 
um, is going to really fit into your offense, fit into your playbook. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, you're coaching high school kids. Um, so um, you're going to say like, how much are they going to uh, take in? Cause you don't want to, you know, you don't want to blow any circuits or anything like that and make them think, um, you know, start overthinking things or whatever, because then it's just going to become a complete mess. So really the challenge starts to become, you know, that you don't want to overdo it. Um, so whatever you kind of put in your arsenal, uh, both run and pass, um, the answers should cover multiple possibilities. And if you've drawn a couple of things up and you start hitting, uh, you know, uh, a couple of, uh, of roadblocks, I guess, like my suggestion would be, then you kind of got to go back and say, okay, well, you know, maybe this isn't it then because we got to find something else to, to, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone type of thing. Uh, because if you don't, then yeah, your playbook, your call sheet is going to be huge and it's going to be pointless because you're not going to be able to work on it. Your kids aren't going to be able to perfect it and know what you're trying to get accomplished. It's going to be, you know, a bit of a mess. Um, you know, the next thing I put on here um, is, uh, and I've heard it specifically from from two different coaches. Uh, Rich Rodriguez talked about this. Uh, he was the first one that I heard in a clinic quite a while ago, uh, talking about uh, numbers, angles, and grass. And then um, we uh, we had an opportunity to go to Penn State a couple of years ago when Joe Moorhead was the, the offensive coordinator. He's at Oregon now. Um, and um, I've I have also heard a couple of his presentations since he's left Penn state. And one thing that uh, he continues to emphasize in all of his talks are, um, you know, that uh, they're going to look for numbers, angles, and grass. And essentially that's how they're going to attack a defense. Um, and really that's, that's what, I mean, I guess you could say it comes down to that with any offense, but when it comes to, to the bunch, these are things that you're going to start asking yourself now. So, um, you know, I talked about alignments a lot and shades and all that. Um, and now that's where this is all going to come into play, right? So like, where do you have numbers? If you got numbers in the box, then it should be obvious that you should be running the ball. If you have numbers to the bunch side, then you should be throwing to the bunch side because you've got the numbers. If you have a good ISO matchup, then that's what you would be taking. You'd be taking the ISO matchup. Um, but again, uh, you know, those are things that, uh, that are, are going to come through that trial and error. Okay. So I talked about experimenting and, uh, and drawing things up and all that. And, and really that's kind of, you know, where, you know, this is all going to kind of come into play and, and, and some things I, I would say you should keep in mind. Um, so, you know, what have we done? Um, so basically um, what we've done is uh, it's a basically a triangle bunch. All right. With the two back offs that I, um, you know, when we've been in the U S and used it um, basically it's ended up, it's ended up being uh, um I, we ended up packaging it. So basically the fullback came out and it was a three by one bunch with an ACE backfield. Um, again, the, the couple clips that I have from, um, uh, from team Ontario, uh, that was the case. Um, and that's, uh, uh, and again, that we went to the ACE, um, you know, we ran it both, um, out of the gun and under center. Um, I, I personally, I mean, again, this is very much, uh, everyone's going to have their own philosophy on it. Um, I, I, I like to run, um, uh, you know, my looks out of both. Um, if you're just a gun team, then, you know, sure, you run just out of gun. If you're, uh, you know, purely on the center, same kind of thing. But then again, in terms of your play design um, and, and, and playbook structure, now you got to keep all that stuff in mind as well. Um, you know, in terms of alignment, and again, this is just the way that we did it. Uh, the point man on the bunch side and the ISO side, uh, we had uh, each line up inside the numbers. Um, and uh, if we were on a hash, basically it would move over. All right. So if we're on a hash, then both sides end up splitting the difference. And what I mean by that is, and I, and I already know in a couple of clips, the, the, the kids got a little bit undisciplined with it. But if we end up on one hat on, uh, you know, the left hash and, and the picture you're seeing here, then the, um, then the ISO man, okay, he's going to end up splitting the difference between the, the sidelines and the numbers, okay? And then the bunch side is going to end up splitting the difference between uh, essentially the numbers and uh, and the tackle, okay? Um, is it, I, I'll say right now, I know right off the bat, it's not perfect. There's some examples that are really good. Actually, the kids were, were very disciplined in it, um, but it's it, it's definitely something you got to work on. Um, you know, and then again, I, I, the, I started this by saying, you know, uh, you know, talking about a purpose and, and, and asking yourself why you did it. So, you know, why do we really start to use the bunch? Um, we, um, we've definitely been a, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I definitely want to run, 
we definitely want to run the ball. Um, I think running the ball is so crucial in football. Um, you know, anybody who's a huge air raid fan, I'm sure that I just broke your heart. Sorry about that. Um, but, um, you know, when, when teams were starting to stack the box a lot against us, um, we're trying to think of different ways, um, to, um, to open that up. Um, and we thought that using the bunch might be, uh, an idea. Um, the problem we had was that at the time, um, we had a couple of quarterbacks, um, and each of them, their arm strength was, was, I'll say so, so. Um, so, you know, having a super wide bunch wasn't necessarily great because getting the ball way out there was going to be a bit of a problem. Um, so we, we had to kind of find a balance between, you know, spreading a defense out, um, as well as, um, you know, being a threat to actually get the ball to those guys. So again, that's where a lot of trial and error came in. Um, you know, what kind of row combinations do we want? How are we going to get each guy the ball? Um, and, and in what scenario and all that, but really, uh, what it came down to was, uh, you know, our strength was very much in our in our running game, and we needed a way to open it up a little bit more, um, and uh, and that's kind of where this all started, um, and that really is kind of the, the the root of it. Now, from there, I'll say that it uh, evolved a little bit, um, and as we started doing this, um, you know, and, and our quarterbacks were getting a little bit better, um, you know, we were able to um, uh, run a couple more. Uh, um, taking some more deep shots and, uh, and running some more deeper concepts and that sort of thing. So now we were kind of able to utilize it in a few different ways. So it wasn't just necessarily opening up the run game. We were able to get, get the ball out to some athletes in space and that sort of thing. Uh, so it kind of evolved after it initially kind of came into play. All right. Okay. So, um, you know, in terms of your pass play structure, and again, uh, this is just kind of the way that, um, you know, I guess you could say I kind of looked at it uh, in terms of, of uh, you know, if, if I'm drawing this on a piece of paper um, or uh, um, uh, kind of the vision I have, uh, like what happened in my mind is, you know, the seven zones or areas of the field that essentially, you know, it's like, okay, how do I get, how do I get a guy there, right? And, and, and who is it that I want to get there? So, um, you know, the first zone that I would say they, that I would be looking at is, you know, the line of scrimmage to basically like one to two yards or so, all right? So, so it's pretty tight. Um, you know, and, and how am I going to get there and how much do I want to get there? Um, you know, the next zone I'm looking at is kind of five to seven yards from the line of scrimmage. And again, looking from the hash to the sideline, um, you know, the next one would be seven to 12 yards. Okay. Um, and then anything above that, right. So 12 plus. So obviously now you're looking at some of your deep shots. Um, and then of course, you know, down the middle, um, you know, you're looking at, uh, again, five to seven yards off one scrimmage. Okay. And again, how am I going to get a guy there? Um, you know, when do I want to get him there? Um, and that sort of thing. Uh, and now you're looking, you know, seven to 12 in the middle. And then again, down the deep middle. Okay. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you, and I'm going to steal this term. Um, you know, I, I did mention, um, uh, coach Munson out, out with the, with the Stan Peters. And it's one thing that, uh, that I hear him say a lot is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, he uses the term play basketball. Now, I played basketball my whole life. So for me, it was very applicable. And I think there's a lot of truth to it. Um, and that's essentially kind of like what you have to end up doing. And, you know, to, to make it easy um, and, and, you know, again, coming from a bit of a basketball background, you know, if, if a team's going to play a zone, usually I want to overload that zone. I want to get somebody moving through it, that sort of thing. Um, you know, if a team's playing man, then you're going to look at, you know, a lot of picks, you're going to look at rubs, uh, and then also you want to look at matchups. Um, you know, sometimes if you, if, and I know I'm using the basketball reference, but it's very true, you know, sometimes you'll watch a basketball team and they're just, they're just trying to isolate a guy. They know that they got a really good matchup. They want to get him the ball. Everyone else moves away and they're just trying to get him the ball. That, I mean, it might happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, another scenario might be, Again, you want to set up a, um, you know, one of your other players. So how do you do that? Could be a pick, could be a rub, whatever. But it's very much a basketball type of philosophy there. Um, you know, now the next thing I want to show you, and again, this is really just one kind of potential look that you could get, all right, in terms of like how, uh, you know, a, a team might react to, to, to your bunch. And this is one of the, the, the looks that, that we would have got. All right. And you can see the half is actually not jamming the bunch a little bit off. They've kept the Sam inside. They've rolled the, the, the backside half up a little bit to take anything, um, you know, uh, like a deep post or something uh, uh, away there from our ISO guy. Um, but 
Okay. Um, in terms of how they ended up uh, dropping into it. Um, and again, this is just one thing that they could possibly do. Um, you know, they, they, they could drop into uh, uh, essentially just a, a cover three look um, uh, like we have here. Um, you know, it, this is just one thing that we could have seen. Now, if they do that and they're, and again, then they're in a zone, then what do I want to do to get after those zones? Right. Like on the back side there, if I know that, you know, this corner is already locked on uh, on my ISO guy. And then on top of that, I got this half rolling up here. Right. And you still got a Wilson in the box. I mean, getting him the ball is going to be pretty difficult. So I don't know if, I'm, if that's going to be great. Um, you know, but now on this side, you know, how do I want to take advantage of, um, you know, one of these areas, right. Um, of, of again, one of these zones and which guy do I want to pick on? Um, and, and for what reason? Because, um, you know, you also don't want to like, you might say, okay, well, I'm going to go after, you know, this, um, you know, this deep third over here, but then this corner might be a baller and get, and trying to, you know, th th he might be able to defend two guys that you try to fight, flood the zone of it. So that might, you might not want to flirt with that disaster. Um, so, you know, again, how are you going to answer that question? You know, now are you going to go after the free? Are you going to do something a little bit shorter in one of the other zones? You know, again, how are you going to do that? But, um, you know, again, I really like the, the way that, uh, that coach Munson used the, the, the play basketball, uh, terminology. So I thought that I would use it here and, and it's very much that way. Um, you know, and then the next thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, having patience. Um, it takes a lot of time. It really does take a lot of time. Um, and you have to be ready for it to not look pretty. Um, there's going to be some ugliness and it's everything. It's from route running. It's from getting off the jams that I talked about. Um, it's from, you know, how your quarterback is, is going to read it. It's how your receivers, um, have to understand, you know, what, what their job is, uh, in terms of the route, um, uh, uh combination that you have, uh, and that sort of thing. And it, it, it takes a lot of trial and error. I, I did talk about that. Uh, you have to work on your spacing. You have to work on your timing, um, how they're going to react to the defense. And again, throwing this out to your kids in practice is so crucial because they have to be able to see it before, uh, you know, you get into a game and then all of a sudden they're like, uh Oh, I've never seen this before. What do I do? Um, and it does take a lot of time. Now, when it, going back to, you know, structuring your playbook and that sort of thing, um, you, you know, again, you got to keep this in mind because it's like, okay, I, I know I'm gonna have to work on this in, pra in practice. So how much extra do I want to put on top of my kids? How much time do I want to put on it? And, you know, Am I going to mesh now a lot of, you know, my, my base philosophy and things we do with the bunch. So it's not too much. Um, if your guys can handle it, then yeah, sure. If you want to pile it on, then, then you can, but it, it might be, it might be tricky and, and it might become very time consuming. Um, but I would say that if you're going to do something like this, you have to commit to it. So you got to build time into every practice um, to, uh, uh, to work on it. Okay, so um, I got a couple of clips now and, uh, and and thought I'd get into a couple of examples to show you guys. Um, so, um, the, so the clip I have here, you can see that we're on, uh, we're running the bunch to the, uh, um, uh, to the short side, okay? And I, I wanted you guys to see, uh, I mean, the, it's pretty, pretty much every offensive coordinator's dream, you know, seeing a defense react late and kind of having the old crap moment, which, which these guys are having here. Um, so that in itself is great. Um, however, uh, on top of that, I want you to just, uh, you know, take, you can take a look here and see what happens. Okay. So, um, you know, not only are they bringing their, their, uh, their half down, they brought their Sam right out and gave us great numbers up over here. All right. So we have a guard basically running for a safety, um, you know, on, on, uh, on our play here. So, um, you know, this was, this, this was great. I mean, this is, this is exactly the, uh, you know, the numbers and angles, um, and, and again, this is how, you know, these guys reacted to it. Um, you know, another team definitely can, can react different. You'll see now this is a little bit different. Um, so, you know, in this look here, you can't really, you can't see the safety. He's, he's out of the picture here. Um, but he's pretty deep. So, you know, right off the bat that, you know, these guys are worried about us throwing deep. Um, so if that's the case then. I mean, I hope that it's common sense that you don't do it then because, you know, if they're ready for it, then you want to do something opposite. Now, the other thing uh, you'll see that uh, this is actually their halfback. Um, and uh, and you can see he's in my opinion, he's rolled up pretty high. Um, you know, he's uh, he's about 10 yards off here. Um, and uh, this is actually their end. OK, and their will is out here. So I'll play this through. 
sorry, other way around. Okay, the uh, the wheel was inside, the end was off the line there. Okay, um, and you'll see once again. All right, numbers work very much into our favor to the side to to the opposite side there. Okay, so I mean, if it, this ends up being a one on one essentially with our running back and a half, um, who's that far off? Then I mean, you know, we've, we've essentially we got a first down. So I'm going to take that, you know, and, and if you got a back that can do that, then that's going to help you a little bit more. Um, but, you know, just just with our numbers and angles, again, um, essentially it ends up being a win. Um, just even before the snap, you know, you can kind of see it uh, pre-snap on how this is going to play out. Um, Coach, are there any questions? I guess I didn't really stop yet. Yeah, no, no, we're uh... – Coaches are are definitely in there talking uh, talking formations. I'm just you know I'm I'm really loving the um, you know just the just the idea of of keeping it simple and the numbers angles and graphs. You know I, I think there's a lot of coaches that can be stubborn and if they have a concept in the you know that they've been they've been practicing all week and they get into that bunch formation, they're going to try to throw it. Um, yeah. You know, it is it is it is it is great to see. You know, if you see a, a halfback ten yards off the off the line of scrimmage, you want to go run the football. Um, that's awesome. Um, you know, for me, the the play basketball is, I think, a, such a great way. You know, if you're new to coaching, or or you're just uh, you know you're trying to find your process. Um, I haven't seen that before, and that's uh, that's a fantastic way to to organize yourself and look at what you're trying to attack. Um, I, I just thought that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And again, I got to give credit to coach Munson on that one. I didn't invent it, um, but I definitely jumped all over it being a basketball player myself. Uh, I thought it was a really, really great way to say it. Um, and I, I mean, and here's a guy at the pro level that that's, you know, how he's coaching his guys and he'll use the same um, basically idea or rationale and, and it, it makes perfect sense. So yeah, no, it's great. No, that's awesome. And, and, and again, personnel wise for you, is it, you know, when you're, when you're looking at it, do you, how do you, how are you determining, you know, looking at this clip from an American field, you know, how do you like to kind of juggle that in terms of you've, you've asked the coaches, you know, it's, it's going to be different for everyone, but what's your personally for you, what do what do you find works when you're kind well, of your bunch? Well, I will, I will say that. So the, the other thing that, uh, that I'll get to is in, this is actually, uh, each of these looks, uh, that I've shown the first three that I've shown is from three different seasons, actually. Uh, okay. well, I, I shouldn't say that this is from one season. This is the next. And then, the um, and then the one from Timo would have been from this year as well. Um, but everything was a little bit different. And so, um, I mean, a, a perfect example is with, uh, sorry, let me go back to the, to the first clip again. Um, so over here, um, you know, in terms of, uh, again, when we were putting this in, uh, our, our, our quarterback's arm strength wasn't fantastic. It really wasn't. Um, but we still obviously had ways to get them the ball. Um, uh, but like I said, we, we wanted, we wanted him to run the ball. And obviously in this situation, it worked out very well. Um, you know, you jump forward and like I said, how there's an evolution to this, you know, we run, run it a year later. Um, we got a really good group of young receivers. Um, we had, you know, a, a guy who we thought was a really good ISO man. And now again, things evolved a little bit. So now we had, you know, we really did have different ways, you know, to get each one of these guys, the ball, him, the ball, run the ball, but it all kind of, um, correlated, corresponded to like what our base offense was. Um, and, uh, and so, I mean, again, f philosophically, I'll say that, you know, it, it didn't change too much in terms of like. I mean, I really think that, like, when you break down football, if if you can if you can run the ball, then I mean, it's it's obviously also the low it's the low risk play, um, and you've got numbers, you, you should do it. So um, you know, and and obviously that's why you know that happens in these clips here. Um, but uh, you know, again, in terms of like the the rationale for for where each guy's where, I, it, it's it's kind of what I what I was saying. Like our point man here. Um, so I, I don't know how many people know Savon. Savon is at Western now and, you know, right off the bat, um, you know, and, and you can see he's a bit of a, he's not the biggest guy, but he is such a great technical receiver and he could get off, um, the jams and understand all the things I was talking about, uh, in terms of what his release needed to be. So things wouldn't be affected by these guys. So, well, that's why he ended up in that spot. 
Um, and, and again, it, it, it definitely changed. Like, um, you know, one thing that I try to do every year is I, I, I go right back to the drawing board and it's like, okay, so what was good? What was bad? Um, you know, what do I want to do or, or, or change from here? So, I mean, from year to year, it, it does change a little bit. So hopefully that answers your question. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We actually have a couple of questions coming in uh, through the live chat now. Uh, Coach Butler wants to know what's the benefit of bunch over your regular trips formation? Um, well, I'd say for sure that, uh, you know, like I was saying, like, like for, for us, it was stretching the defense out. Um, you know, if you're in a regular trips formation, um, you know, if, uh, really there's only the, the only, like the only ways that defense really can react to trips is you're either going to bring the Sam out the half over or the free down or have kind of a rotation to it. Um, and if you're in a regular trips, then whoever's over your number three, he can end up being a real pain when it comes to if you're trying to run the ball on that side. Um, whereas if you spread him out with the bunch, then, you know, that, that, that does stretch him out a little bit. Um, so that's definitely a benefit, but then, so that's the run game benefit pass game benefit is if you've got, um, one of those defenders who is not necessarily, he might be one of their weaker defenders. And now all of a sudden you can create, um, you know, a nice little matchup. Like I'm going to show you guys a couple of hitch passes that we throw to a couple of our guys there. Um, and, uh, you could capitalize on that. Well, now you just, you would just put the ball way out, way out near the sidelines and you've got, you know, two of their guys or three of their guys trying to make a tackle with a couple of blockers way out on the sidelines versus, you know, um, somewhere where there's a lot of traffic and linebackers can come and help and that sort of thing. So, I mean, that's kind of my answer to that one. No, that's awesome. No. And, and one of the things I love, love out of the bunch, especially like you're talking about when you're, especially at the high school level, your, your, you know, arm strength varies so much i think it's a great way to condense the field and still give yourself lots of options um in the pass game as well um yeah. you, you guys to walk in inside the numbers especially up here and you're going to put yourself in a great spot i'll let you roll we got a, cu a couple other questions that we'll get to here uh in a few minutes okay sounds good now this clip here so i'm gonna and, and i'm gonna be completely honest with you guys when we brought, when we were going to, to Texas and we were playing Timo here, we we did not. I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'll be as nice as possible. We did not have the um, um, the talent level we expected that came up to our tryout. Um, I'll give these kids; they they worked hard. They did, um, and you know they did what they were asked and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, we really we we had to find ways to get our most talented guys the ball. Um, and when it came to me running the bunch here. Um, you know, the, our, basically our, our receiver who's down at the bottom here, I've got another clip. I'll show you where we get him on an ISO. Um, and then our running back who little guy, um, but, um, he ran the ball really, really well, really, really tough. Um, you know, if I could show this entire game and some of the clips of this, that this guy ran the ball, he, he, he actually had a pretty good game. Um, and really that's what we wanted to do. No offense to these guys, but to be honest, our focus was not to get them the ball. It was really to try to open up the box a little bit. And then if anything, try to get him uh, on an isolation. The other reason I wanted to show this clip um, and I'll run it through and you'll see exactly why I'm sorry. It's a little bit grainy. Okay. Is it's not perfect. And this is where I want to talk about the patience. Okay. Um, now we can argue this to the death a little bit. In my personal opinion, I really think that our quarterback did a terrible job on this zone read. Okay. And as the end committed, I really think that he could have taken this ball and it could have been a one-on-one -on -one with this guy and he should have had a touchdown. That's my personal opinion right off the bat. But I'm sure quarterback coaches might argue me on that one um, and say, no way. But I really think he could have. Uh, the other thing is you'll see on the left side of this, okay, our, our back makes a really bad read. Now, I granted, okay, we don't have a fantastic block here, all right? But if he gets his foot in the ground, okay, and he falls up the left side, you'll see our their end drops off to cover in the bunch. Which, if you ever if you ever do end up, I mean, we we go to the states once a year um, with uh, with STM, and uh, that's another great thing actually. That's our head coach Claudio uh, Silvestri has arranged ever since he uh, he actually started uh, way back in the early two thousands are, are those games in the states. But if you do, do get an opportunity to go to the states and you end up running it, you understand that the condensed field changes everything. And this is a perfect example, right? You got a defensive end who essentially can drop off and become a pain in the butt. Um, in defending, uh, you know, your, your, your bunch here. So he drops off, which is awesome. And you can see if our back puts his foot in the ground, he actually, he has at least a shot to get a couple of yards, if not get his head down and bust through this seam, he doesn't. All right. Now, 
again, I showed this for, I wanted to, I thought this clip was good for, 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 um, both of these things that I wanted to, to, to mention to you. Well, uh, I guess I should say three things. First, you can kind of see the look at the ace, um, uh, um, the, the ace backfield. Um, I wanted to talk about the patience because it, these things take time. You know, if I didn't, if I had more than a week to prep these guys, <laughs> then, you know, could, could we have, you know, worked something like this out uh, and iron this out for sure. Um, and then also I wanted to talk about how my rationale was a little bit different when we ran it here um, versus, uh, uh, versus some of the ones that I showed you, uh, uh, uh previously. So that, that's one of the reasons I wanted this clip. I know that, uh, and the other thing is that, um, you know, I, I've, I've listened to a lot of clinics before, uh, I've been to a lot of clinics, I've listened to a lot of videos. Um, and I think that showing some imperfections, um, is also, uh, important. Um, you know, things aren't, aren't always perfect and, and exactly, like, I mean, I, I personally think that, you know, here, and, and you might call a great play. And I think that really this should have gone one way or the other, the quarterback or the running back. Um, but sometimes that happens, you know, and, and kind of, it is what it is. You got to kind of live another day. Um, okay. So I'm going to move ahead to the next one. Um, once again, you have a completely different way that a team is reacting to our bunch. Okay. Um, you know, uh, again, at this point, um, these guys have run this look uh, a little bit. I will say that this receiver, um, he had to, we had an injury. So you can see that uh, when we called this in, uh, his, his split isn't great. Um, he should have actually been a little bit tighter. Um, but, um, um, but when we were playing these guys, um, we had noticed they were, I, I, I did tell you that we, you know, it wasn't necessarily a secret that, uh, you know, we had a pretty good running back uh, and we were, uh, you know, we, we did like to run the ball. Um, so they tried to, um, stack the box a little bit. Um, you can see how low essentially, I mean, this may as well be a linebacker. It's, it's more or less kind of like a strong safety, but it may as well be a linebacker for how tight he was. Um, and you can see how low they were playing the bunch over here. They don't have, they're not staggered in any way. Um, you know, I did mention the, the, how Nick Saban talked about their interstate and traffic and the way that he was talking about it was basically his two, uh, two of the guys that were off the bunch, they start playing almost like a match game. And one, when, you know, one receiver breaks inside, one will go with that one. And then the other will go with the outside guy. Um, and you'll see, and they're, they're basically, they're, they're, they're staggered. They're not, I mean, these guys are like, you know, they're, they're three in a line here. Right. Um, but what this did for us is you can see that the field side is very, very open right now um, with um, these guys, obviously rotating all the way over the bunch on top of that. Uh, essentially, I, I, I mean, I'm saying strong safety because typically those strong safeties are good run supporters, but you know, he's a safety that's really low in the box. However you want to say that he's pretty much a linebacker um, was also on this side of the hash. So you, I'll let this play play out um, again. They were very focused on our run. You can see we run a counter play. They bite on it. Okay. It opens up those numbers and angles I was talking about. All right. Uh, no offense to, to to my buddy Joe O'Brien up there, our receiver. He, he did a good job stepping in for us. But uh, if he makes this block, it should be a touchdown. And, uh, you know, he kind of misses it. <laughs> um, it happens. Um, but you can see that, um, you know, really this – at the end of the day, you end up we ended up using it to our, our, our a numbers advantage, right? Um, you know, they rotated so hard over. They were so focused on our run game. I'm going to show you another clip from this game as well that um, – where it helped later on. Um, but it, it, it really opened up that the other side of the field for us. And, and obviously it was a huge play. Um, this might've been one of the first times we used this. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned here, we were motioning into the bunch. Um, I'll say there's, there's an upside, there's, there's downsides. And I mean, I can, I can talk for hours about that. Um, but here, um, as I mentioned, we, uh, you know, I, I told you that, you know, we wanted to spread things out a little bit. Um, but on top of that, we needed to try to get these guys the ball somehow. And you'll see right here. Okay. So we're running basically it's, that should have been a slant. Sorry. Okay. So what ends up happening here, our receivers running a slant. Um, he sees how the backers expanding. Okay. Right there to get, Oh geez. Sorry. And then he just gets over top of them. All right. And again, sorry, you can't see the rest of the, uh, the routes really on the clip here. 
Okay, but you can see we're hitting right in between the window here. So the, the back, the linebacker overexpands. Okay. All right, we get a nice completion. We're not, this is not that far down the field. All right. Like it, it may look like it. All right. But at the end of the day, right, where does he catch this ball? Essentially, you know, just about, you know, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage or so. Okay. It's really not that far, um, you know, down the field. All right. Not too difficult of a throw. Pretty easy read for a quarterback. Uh, for this quarterback in particular, he really liked our, 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 our quick slant game. It was one of his favorite reads. And I'm not going to lie. That's the, one of the main reasons why, why um, you know, I, I went with this look because it was easy for him to read. Um, and, um, you know, we knew that they, they wanted to, to stop our run game. We needed them to respect it. And there you go. It, was, it really is not that deep of a pass. It's nothing super fancy, but it's enough now that they would have to worry, you know, about us throwing that ball. Um, okay, so this look here, all right? Now, I did mention – Okay, that um, you know, getting your 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 athletes, okay, your 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 one your guys who you think can run, you know, assault one on one in space can be a huge advantage. So you know, again, team stack in the box, no surprise. Okay, um, you know, as I'm playing this through, you see they, they got two guys out here. All right, now we don't have a great block. Okay, you're going to see here. All right, not a fantastic throw. All right, but if we get that block. All right, it's essentially a one-on-one -on -one up the sidelines. All right, and that should have been an easy first down for us. So I know, you know, it's I, I know it's not perfect, right? Not exactly how you draw it up, but you can see. Sorry, guys. You can see how this is shaping up. Okay, that. So we get our kick out here. All right, we're lined up right here, and as, if he catches this clean, I know not a great throw. If he catches this clean, he has a seam right here. Now, I don't necessarily need a touchdown on every play, but, you know, was I go going for a first down? Absolutely. If he catches that clean and we get a nice block, that should have been an easy first down. Okay. Um, so that was an ISO to, uh, you know, you saw one of our guys who was, uh, who was not, who was not the point man. He was one of the, one of the, the uh, uh, he was our slot there standing at the back. Now here, okay, you're going to see, we went the other way around. So basically we blocked for the point man here because this is who we wanted to get the ball. And now we're going to have a block here. All right. We have a block there and you can see there's no one else out there. All right. And here we go. All right. He makes a pretty good read. I would have preferred that he bust that out to the sideline a little bit quicker before that backer became an issue. He didn't really make a great play on it. Okay. But again, that's an athlete. You want to get the ball in some space. All right. And it's honest to God, that simple. All right. That's great. And I think the screen game out of a bunch is, is so interesting and you can do a bunch of really unique things with it. Whether you're, you're tunneling back with it, um, you get some confusion, you know, if, if you feel like you have a dominant athlete on the point too, that makes a huge difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you want to get to a quick question from coach Joe here? Um, he says he doesn't like to carry over the same route stems from week to or from week to week from bunch. Uh, how do you like the game plan your bunch week to week? Um, again, like, like I was saying, like for, for me personally, um, that goes, that goes back to uh, honest to God, the beginning of the season. Um, and, and what I mean by that is I've got to know what I'm going to go into to the season with and how I'm going to go after different things. So, um, and again, when I'm structuring, you know, the, the, whatever it is I want to get done um, in our bunch looks, I'm going to say to myself, if a team does, and then I'm going to give myself as many scenarios as I can, what am I going to do? And, you know, in, in terms of like the, the, the plays that we have in, how does that correspond with what, what we all, we want to get done just in general, um, you know, and then now how can I use the bunch to my advantage with those plays? So me personally, I'm not going to go and draw up um, a whole new look for one week. What I will do is I might tweak something. So if we've got a concept in, I might say, okay, well, you know, normally when you're running, like I, I showed you the, the clip there of the slant that our receiver was running, but it essentially was deep. So, I mean, you know, I mean, that, and that's an adjustment because it ended up almost looking like kind of like a short post. So, um, you know, that's not, you're not really changing a play in that instance. So, you know, if I was prepping a team and I knew that, you know, all it was going to take was, 
okay, we're going to, you know, skinny this post, fatten that post, um, that sort of thing. And those are little adjustments in the play concepts I have. Then, yeah, maybe I would change things that way. But I'm not going to change our, our entire playbook or concepts from, from week to week necessarily. Um, I am going to take a look at, obviously, what the defense is doing. And then I'm going to go back to, okay, well, what do we do to get this done? Now, I will say that if I can grab, like if there's a route combination we haven't necessarily worked on, uh, in the bunch, but we have it like kind of in our catalog, if you will. And I think it will work well and it's an easy transition. Will I put that in and work on it? Yeah, I might do that. Um, but I'm not going to necessarily go in and, and put in something completely random, um, for that week. Awesome. No, that's a great point. And I think, you know, as adjustments to your route tree and, and different depths is such an important thing to take a look at. Um, going into a game plan yeah so now for this clip um i wanted to show you guys going after the iso all right now again uh this is a pretty talented receiver um and uh, you know if there was a receiver that that we knew we, we had to get the ball to um one way or another it was him throughout this game he made a couple of nice catches um and this is one of them um and i'm gonna play this one out and i'll go back and forth so now you're gonna see here all right um, so they're very much, again, you know, they, these guys were very much concerned about our run game. Okay. So he comes up and now I've essentially got an ISO with him over here. All right. And I mean, it doesn't get much like, I mean, it's a great ball, right? It's a great catch. All right. But it's essentially exactly what this is designed for. All right. If you're going to go after the ISO, you know, and you've designed it for, for this purpose, this, you ha that's when you use it. Right. Um, so, you know, the, the, Sorry, again, I know that's not the best clip, all right? But what ends up happening is uh, that corner bites on that inside move, all right? So he knows that he's got to get to the sideline, all right? And essentially, okay, he's stemming him inside, right, to, to, to get him, okay, to obviously bite inside for some type of an inside move, and he breaks it back out, and the quarterback puts him in a great spot, all right? And this play actually set up um, that uh, that other play that I had, uh, that, that run play that I had shown you, Um uh, a little bit earlier. All right. But again, this was, this was the reason that, that we were running this bunch. It was, it was again, to, to try to run the ball a little bit and to get this ball to him. Okay. Now uh, you don't get a good look about on, on, on how they were jamming this over here. Okay. But um, you know, there, there, there's another, there was another clip here and I don't know if I, if I kept this one in, but our point man here actually gets jammed pretty hard and he doesn't do a good job of it at all. And, you know, I would say that that would have been a point of emphasis to say, you know, you got to make sure that that guy is a guy who can get off the jam. This situation, you know, we had, you know, we were pretty limited in the guys we could bring down. So it was a little bit of a, of a, we had to kind of put in who, who we could. Um, okay. So the next look I wanted to show you, and again, I told you, it was like an, uh, an offensive coordinator's dream, right? You know, we're about to snap the ball. You got guys pointing everywhere. Like, you know, they're confused, okay? Clearly they're confused. They don't know what we're going to necessarily do. Um, we did run the bunch earlier in the game uh, to see how they're going to react, and they they obviously had a tough time working this out, okay? Now, they come over late, okay? But you can see that they overexpand to it, okay? And then our outside receiver, okay, ends up getting that little window there. Okay. And I'm going to show you another play where we hit him as well. Okay. And again, this takes a lot of time. Okay. It's not like we just necessarily did that, you know, just like in a day or even in a week. All right. Uh, we probably threw a pick a couple of times. Uh, we probably um, were looking at the wrong things uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, the quarterback even gives a glance at the ISO over here. Okay. And had a second to do that before he looks back. Okay. But you can see, all right, that um, essentially he overexpands on this. He stays low and that opens up. Okay. Essentially that, uh, that one zone. Now, you know, you might look at these concepts. You, you can say, okay, well, you know, they're, they're, they're running, essentially they're running verticals. All right. Okay. And yeah, that ends up being like a pretty deep throw, but okay. He ends up opening up again, you know, just in about, you know, just short of 10 yards. Okay. And the quarterback, he leads them really nice. It's a nice throw. That's a great throw. Okay. And, and again, he makes a nice move. And when it becomes that, I mean, now we're into the play basketball again, right? So now you put him in a good position, catching the ball there. 
essentially with that one on one with the safety, and he needed someone to bail him out. Sorry, coach. I know I'm uh, I'm pushing my time a little bit here, so I'll uh, I'll try to get through. I think I'm almost done. Um, so here's another look with it. Okay. Uh, this is a different quarterback now. Uh, that's the other thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is I don't know if you've noticed, um, but I think this is the fourth. Oh, he was actually in another clip, but I think it was one of the run clips. Um, this is like the fourth quarterback, all right, that, uh, that you know, I've, I've, I've kind of shown with, with these examples just to kind of show you that, like, this isn't necessarily like, okay, well, we had this guy and that's why we could do it. Um, you know, this is, you know, did this with a couple of different guys and had a couple of different, uh, I told you that there was a bit of an evolution Okay, in terms of what we were able to uh, or how we were able to do it uh, over time. Um, but, uh, you know, it, I wanted you to see that it wasn't just about one guy. Um, I will say the same receiver ends up making this catch. Sorry, guys. Um, but as far as the quarterback throwing it, it's a different kid. Okay, so here, all right, you can see. So now the – so you can see that the, um, the backer here who's expanding – Okay, he's jumping a slant. Okay, and again, this is something we practiced. All right, and he needed to be ready for the ball in certain spots. And one of the things we practiced was be ready for the ball at ten yards. Okay, and you can see this is actually probably a better example than than the last one in terms of how this really isn't that deep of a throw, even though the concept might be you know that he's that it, that like essentially vertical. He ends up running okay up this seam here. Okay. Um, but uh, we put the ball here, all right? He catches that ball. Let's see how far off the line is he on the, on the, on the catch. 30. Oh, he's what? I think it was nine yards, eight or nine yards. He makes that catch. Okay, and then he gets taken down probably. How far was he off in this one? Let's see. You know, he gets an extra, oh, wow, six, seven, eight yards. All right, again, on, it really was not, it's not a deep completion, but, you know, we get downfield, all right? Now, I think this is the last clip I have because, again, I'm going over my time here, so sorry about that. Um, but I told you about, about how, you know, when we were playing these guys, um, you know, they were very focused on our run again. Um, and on this one, um, this was supposed to be a little bit more of a play action. We don't really get the the, the play action look necessarily, but uh, you'll see our fullback leaks out of the backfield. All right, they bite completely, all right, um, and, and step up on it, and they realize it too late, Okay. And we hit him over the top for a touchdown. Um, so, um, you know, again, I, I, I think that, you know, in, in this example here, now we're using our backs in a little bit of a different way. And that's why I wanted to show this clip as well. So, yeah, I did tell you that, you know, if, I mean, football one-on-one, if you can run the ball and you've got numbers and stuff, sure, like that, that you know, you, you do that. Um, but here, use it to your advantage as well, right? So they jump up on it. Um, we have this play action look in. Um, and it obviously will very much to our advantage. Okay. They, they, they bit right up on us. Um, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention as far as, um, you know, going back to how I started this uh, and talking about, um, you know, all the assistant coaches, uh, again, our, the defensive coordinators, like, so I drew so many of these things up. We talk about so much of this stuff, but, um, this play design actually came from, uh, so our head coach ran uh, a play action look one of the first years, um, uh, I was at STM. Uh, when Claudio was uh, was uh, was still running the offense, and he had a look where his uh, his back um, ran a seam out of the backfield. And when I was putting this together, I actually said, you know what, I really really like that look. Um, you know, how do we incorporate it into the offense? And I was like, well, you know what, um, maybe in the bunch. And that's kind of how it happened. So um, you know, again, that's you know, th those are conversations that happen. You know. <laughs> years before and things that happened years before, but they ended up, you know, in, in kind of this moment. So uh, again, I wanted to bring up those guys just because, um, you know, they're, they're such a huge part in, in developing all these things. But um, so that's, um, those are all the clips. Those are, that's everything I have for you um, to give you, you know, kind of an idea of how the bunch has worked for us um, in uh, again, in a couple of different ways. Um, also, uh, you know, how, how we use it in team O as well. And how um, you know is advantageous in some ways. Um, you know, I'll take a couple of questions. Obviously, there's still some questions, but if anyone wants to get a hold of me, by all means, uh, shoot me an email, um, or uh, you can um, uh, follow me on Twitter there, and I'll uh, hopefully I can answer them. Yeah, thanks, Coach. That was great, and and you know, kind of just letting you guys go with that one. It was nice to sit back and watch and and take a look at some of the stuff that did pop up in the chat. 
Uh, I think you answered most of them, um, which is great. Uh, and, and thanks for all the work that went into that presentation. I know, um, you know, there's a lot of detail there and, and a subject, I think if you kind of skate over it, people can lose the significance of it, but you know, this is such a good deep dive, you know, on that there. Um, I, I do want to get us, get us to our next guy and, and try and keep us on track, but there was a couple of really good questions here. Um, in the chat and, and let me know if, if, if you guys have already answered these, I was back and forth between our social media and stuff. So I didn't hear everything that you guys went through, but. Um, I think we got to, I think we got to everything Jackson. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. Um, like, like coach said, guys, uh, you know, I, I had never met Rob and I reached out to him on Twitter and, and, you know, we went back and forth about doing this He's a really approachable guy. Um, you know, and, and our numbers on here, coach, in terms of these live things, you know, you never know how it's going to do. That was really, really well attended from uh, just taking a quick look at what we got there. So glad lots of people were there to check it out. Um, and, and like we said, if, if you've got any more questions for coach, feel free to, to reach out to him. And, and uh, he's a really available, really accessible guy. And, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's hard. Like I think right now we're all trying to find more resources and you know, the more kind of connections we can make, the better. So thanks a lot, coach. And uh, if anyone has any questions or, or um, you know, anything else you want to you learn about punch or, or what else we're doing at STM, they score points in a lot of ways. It's not just punch. Um, but uh, if you're looking for anything else, they're one of the best programs in the country. And, and thanks a lot, Coach, uh, coach Fooch, for helping us out. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate the invite. Uh, all the other coaches that are on, you know, wish, wish all those guys luck and, uh, and definitely everybody all the best uh, going forward. So thanks again for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. I'm going to let Coach Smart in here, and we're going to start talking about hopefully trying to stop people from scoring points, switch the switch the tune a little bit uh, to quarters and try lock. So thanks a lot, Coach Rob, and we'll, and we'll see you later. Thanks. All right. Just 